Welcome back to Linux Weekly Daily Wednesdays, where we can sit back, relax, Hello. take that midweek break, talk about some of the fun things we found going on in the world of open source. I'm Vin Stone, that is Joe Bryan, and over there is Pedro Mateus and everyone. Hello. Hopefully, maybe you're back to work hello, if you want to be, or maybe you're not if you don't want to be. I hope everything's working out for you, but you're watching this live, this brilliant, joining us in chat. Kind of a big week. We got a lot of things. We're going to talk about Linus as a new computer. Gnome did mm -hmm. some good. And uh, <laughs> yeah, some audio stuff I played around with. Ah, speaking of, uh, well, uh, no, let's just start with uh, Jill because you're doing something <laughs> that is what I would call cleaning with a bunch of extra words thrown in. <laughs> okay, so, <laughs> so I've been reorganizing my vintage computer collection in a garage. And one of the reasons is that uh, Stephen needs to make his studio uh, a bit bigger these days. So, um, oh, going... you got told off. <laughs> you got told you had to clean your room, didn't you? <laughs> no, it, it's very clean and, and neat. I'm just compressing it, trying to make it in a smaller area so it doesn't Pedro, take up half the garage. Pedro, have you watched Hoarders? It gets higher. <laughs> yeah, it gets higher. It does. That's how people get trapped in their house and they find them years later because things fall over on them. <laughs> Well, these are on big roll moving rolling. Oh, all my computer ah. equipment is in plastic bins on big moving rolling racks. So they're don't get any dust. They're clean and they're organized. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, but those casters will give out. <laughs> <laughs> Anything new with you, Pedro? <laughs> I'm not really. Even the thing that I ordered off eBay got delayed because it was a. Um, Bank holiday on Monday, which oh, was right, nice. I got right. to play a lot more uh, Code Vein. So. Yeah, you did. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was basically, I got up, wait a second. Oh, today's a bank holiday. Oh, great. That um, means I can go play Code Vein. <laughs> yay. <laughs> you, you got me beat. I was like, man, I put six hours. And then it's like, Pedro's put mm -hmm. like a week already. I'm like, how'd you do that? There's not been that many hours. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I I use that amulet that they have in Harry Potter because you know it's local. So I just uh, twirled it a few times. I got a few extra hours off today. <laughs> if you say so, man. I really don't know. Uh, what have I been doing? I don't have the box. Been I've been busy hacking stream decks. I bought one of the like little YouTuber specials. I'm like, yo, what's up, fam? It's your boy Vin Mint, and so I can like press buttons and have pictures and stuff and all that. I just want to see what the process was with getting one working with Linux. It's a bit roundabout and I'm going to make it like, I'm put an extra roundabout in your roundabout. I'm going to exhibit this thing and make it work with a, um, OBS web sockets, but I'll have that out maybe later this week. I was going to have it, um, like put together today, but I got up this morning and the internet's like, nah, no upload yeah. speed for you. <laughs> so, so that was like eight o'clock this morning getting in touch with Charter. And they're like, we got it. We got it fixed. Uh, then uh, what else? Do oh, yeah. This thing that I've been playing with for almost a month now. Uh, yeah. Black Magic was like, you know what? Do you want to send that back to us so we can take a look at it? I'm like, Not really, but yes. Also, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so hopefully that gets sorted out. So I look forward to ripping this thing out of Threadbooper and putting the other ones back in. And hopefully there will not be any delays. And they'll send me one back that works. And that'll be nice. I'll be happy. Maybe. That would be nice, yeah. A little bit. Very nice. <laughs> so let's get right into it because we have rockets to watch. Yes. Very sure. Yes, we do. We uh, we do very much want to pay attention to that particular live stream. But before we yes. get to that, we need to talk mm -hmm. about that uh, patent case that Yay. Gnome had leveled against them, mm -hmm. because it's been resolved and they reached an out of uh, out of court. Um, I want to say amicable resolution. It probably wasn't all that friendly while they were uh, hashing it out, but they managed to. Gnome didn't pay anything. Which is awesome. Mm -hmm. uh, and they had a bunch of uh, pro bono lawyers, which was also really, really, really awesome. Um, mm -hmm. Sherman and Sterling did a very good job on that one. And 
they uh, not only did they not pay anything and be allowed to continue to develop and distribute Shotwell, which was the core of the patent issue, but mm -hmm. also uh, all of the patents that are currently a part of uh, Rothschild patent imaging, the 100 and something patents that they currently hold, can't be leveraged against GNOME. <clears throat> It's a bit specific, it's GNOME specifically, but the um, head honcho, uh, Lee M. Rothschild, uh, did say that, uh, what was this actual quote? Because I totally called BS on it. It's like, I'm especially, uh, no, that's the GNOME one. There it is. I'm pleased that we managed to settle this issue amicably. Um, I've always uh, supported the innovation of open source software and its developers and encourage its innovation and adoption. <laughs> BS mm. complete bull freaking horse crap. <laughs> yeah, so gosh. Um so so true, Pedro. <laughs> and you know, since this became an issue, um, like we talked about last October, I, you know, I've I've actually been wondering how long would this would take to get resolved, and I was concerned about the outcome. Well, it's it's the best possible outcome, and I'm so happy it got resolved so quickly. And it's really, truly a win for the future of open source software. Way to go, GNOME. And, you know, thank you to the Linux community for supporting GNOME monetarily and getting the word out in the fight against patent trolls. That was just awesome. Everyone came came to their aid. So cool. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think they have a better understanding about um, open source. And you don't want to stick your arm in that hornet's nest. It will come back at you and it will come back at you hard. But. Yeah. This has been resolved for the best. Uh, best possible outcome would have been, you know, if they just get it completely dismissed with prejudice. So this could never happen mm. to anyone again. But yeah. at least uh, they didn't have to burn through a lot of cash for a prolonged legal yes. battle. Yeah. Of any time. yeah. <laughs> Linus has Yay. upgraded his Embra Sprinta 486. Oh, this is exciting. So. <laughs> After 15 years of using Intel-based CPUs, the creator of Linux, Linus Torvalds, is now rocking an AMD Threadripper. Yay! Way to go, Linus. So happy Linus got a 39070X 32-core 64 thread beast for compiling the Linux kernel. And, you know, it's interesting. And what I was asking now, the real question is, did he get an AMD GPU like like uh, Pedro is going to talk about with Crow Hartman or uh, from at level one techs, or did he get an NVIDIA GPU? And it was funny because this morning um, he re they released the hardware that he bought for his system, but the GPU is not included. <laughs> so <Yeah. laughs> <I'm> still <laughs> asking what GPU, Linus? He, he must have some reason why he hasn't announced that yet. <laughs> But everything else is there. The motherboard, which is the Gigabyte Aorus Master TRX40, which is a classic for a Threadripper. And uh, a nice be quiet case, because he went it quiet, just like we do. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, um, I saw the article, and it's like, then I also saw the integrated v uh, video that shows, oh, we're building a whisper quiet uh, Threadripper for Greg Crow Hartman. It's like, mm. oh, mm. oh, hello. Awesome. <laughs> so uh, it's uh, Wendell's video mm. from Level 1 Text, and he actually goes through the whole build process like, oh, the Noctua at HD15 cools uh, 3970X without issue. Huh. How about that? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, like Frank's back. You know, he got done um, self isolating, but he's covering up Linus. So, uh, you know, saying NVIDIA is number one in mono. Yes. <laughs> Poster back there. Uh, Welcome to the wild and wacky world that is Threadripper land, mm -hmm. as I, I've been playing, experimenting mm -hmm. with, and learning myself over the last year. Uh, I'm going to say this for anyone listening. If you're looking to build a gaming rig or anything like that, unless you absolutely, positively need 64 PCI lanes, get a 3950. Get What, what do you have? Mm -hmm. A, um, a 3700X? <laughs> more than enough. More than capable. Because um, you are in for a world of bizarrely overpriced equipment. Mm -hmm. 
And just Especially motherboards. <laughs> motherboards, weird RAM stuff, um, weird compatibility issues. And, you know, as soon as you bring Threadripper to the QA party, they're like, oh, that's probably the problem. Like, no, it's not. Everything else works. So good on Linus. And yeah, that, that's a big, big jump. So he'll be able to play yep. X Bill. Like oh, yeah. And <laughs> the other important thing about this is actually this is really good for AMD. You know, they see this as a feather in their cap now that two giants of Linux are using their processors. Well, this is so. the first time Intel. Uh, um, yeah. Not Intel. This first time <laughs> Linus has went to AMD. He's been on Intel for the past 15 years. So. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's cool. I mean, he's a bit late to the party because, you know, everyone else was, you know, oh, Ryzen's all the rage. And then Google and Dell and HP started eyeing the Epic processors and going, hmm. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, check this out. So Yay. you're looking for something to download your Linux ISOs with? Hey. Yeah. So after more than two years, the Transmission Transmission 3.0 open source BitTorrent client has been released with major improvements and visual polish. And one of the cool things they added is added peer ID for torrent and download clients, including support for Baidu NetDisk, Free Download Manager, Folks, PicoTorrent, and XF Play. And they improve support for IPv6 addresses in the RPC server, as well as throughout the app in general. And as you know, there's two different clients of transmission, the GTK one and the QT one. Well, the GTK plus client received keyboard shortcuts for Q up and down, a modern desktop file, app data file, a symbolic icon variant uh, for GNOME's desktop top bar and a high contrast theme, which is really cool. How was, and, how were yeah. those not there already? <laughs> I know, it was just, it was a very- You didn't need all that to very download very classic. Linux <laughs> it was a very classic looking, <laughs> looking program. But apparently the, the QT client uh, now supports QT 5.2 and looks much better on high DPI 4K displays. So I still need to, that's the QT client. So, New, the, yeah, the, the newer versions of QT actually have yeah. proper high DPI support. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you know, this is this is really important because transmission is not only the the default included in Ubuntu for downloading BitTorrents, but um, I use it as my go-to client for downloading Linux ISOs. So, it's uh, because <laughs> yes. it's installed by default. Linux although, ISOs. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. And some other things. <laughs> we do not talk yes. about the other things. Pedro, I've Linux even updated the um, translations. They yeah. have. Uh, there's a bunch of new um, translations available, uh, including Afrikaans, Catalan, Danish, Greek, uh, Norwegian. Awesome. I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce that. Uh, mm -hmm. Slovenian <laughs> have been added, as well as they finalized um, the Portuguese from Portugal <laughs> translation. The, mm -hmm. it's, it's finally available in Moonspeak. Don't, don't you yes. love it when, when it has Portuguese, Portuguese? <laughs> yes, I do very much appreciate it. And, you know, I'm, what I'm about to say... Just, you know, the Brazilian people out there. Should I just to this, go ahead and hit the mute button? I mean, is this is going to save me time. No, but the Brazilian Portuguese translation that was uh, in transmission was frankly poor mm -hmm. because it was clearly a translation designed by programmers, um, by the people who just wanted like, okay, that's in Portuguese. That's good enough. Just deal with it. And some of the options were frankly wrong and other settings were just completely incomprehensible. Um, so yeah, no, the, there are a lot of really good Brazilian Portuguese translators out there. It's just that Mm -hmm. They're not using Linux from the look yeah. of things because okay. it is not good. <laughs> I also have something I, I had to throw back. Now, when it comes to applications like this, like a, I think a well-designed GUI application, you don't have to read anything. You, yes. Yes. But it's mostly about the settings and like setting limits and setting NAT ports and setting stuff like that. When you get into the nitty gritty of a torrent client, I suppose, mm -hmm. it does pay to have, like, you know, 
well-defined sections, well-defined options, uh, clear yeah. descriptions of what things do, and Takes transmission does yeah. not have it, it, it. <laughs> it, it needs good translation for Technobabble. <laughs> So. Yeah. One of the yes. things I was thinking about when I was seeing the update to transmission, I saw another post on Twitter that um, some, I, I forget the name of the client, but it was a download client. I was like, when was the last time I ever used a download <laughs> client? Remember those? Yeah, 90s. <laughs> yeah. I used to use, what was it, Down the Mall? Okay. Oh, yes. Because I it that let one. you download uh, <laughs> pictures from those websites that didn't let you download them, and people were too lazy to go look in the source code. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, no, I used to use Down the Mall, uh, but I don't remember exactly why I stopped using it. I've I think I read some news. It's like, if you're using this, stop right now. It, mm. It's been spreading malware to people. It's like, all right, okay. Mm. <laughs> oh, man. Then you just went back in. Or you searched for it on Kazaa again. Yeah. <laughs> LimeWire. What are you Lime talking wire. about? <laughs> yeah. Don't forget FrostWire. Emil. That was the thing. <laughs> Emil. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Bear share. Check Come this out. Adore 6.0, it's finally out. Uh, this has been in works forever. Um, release notes, a bunch of big stuff. Full latency compensation, uh, way better MIDI handling, better plugin management support for the Bearing Direct Touch 1 that's currently sitting next to me. And bugs, bugs, and bugs, mm -hmm. and more bugs. And well, that, that's part of an Adore release. There's actually one bug that has been present since I, I've been compiling this and following with nightly builds that I just can't use it here until it gets sorted. It's a latency issue with the way it's working with the buses. But if you are the adventurous type, give it a try. Now, you might notice if you click the download button, I know some people get confused. You'll go to the download page. Source code is completely free. You can go to Git, clone it. I Hopefully, depending how this week shapes up, I'll have a video for everyone on how to build it because there's a big honking dependency list that you have to kind of sort out. <laughs> and that's nowhere on the site because the site's like, no, it's impossible to build. It's wizard stuff. Stay away. Um, <laughs> you know, give us about tree fitting and we'll give you the binary, which is perfectly fair. hundred percent, mm -hmm. which I do. But it's also, you know, if you want to test it yourself, I want to build stuff myself. Um, have fun with it. Yeah. Well, I thought it was cool that that Ardour 6.0 now supports FLAC recording, which I know a lot of a lot of people in the Linux podcasting use it, use uh, FLAC for recording. Yeah. And um, there are now official ARM binaries, uh, 32 and 64 bit builds for Linux for the Raspberry Pi and many other ARM devices, of course. And it also supports Net NetBSD, FreeBSD, and Open Solaris. Yeah, so win for our door, and it, and it shows it's 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 getting even more support on the Nixes, which is really good. <laughs> Maybe that'll be a fun video project. I'm gonna take out one of my sun stations. I'm like, let's build an audio. <laughs> <Yes. Wait. laughs> there you go. Hey, it'd probably work really well, <laughs> nice and stable. You can start. You can start that series by like, let's install latest version of Solaris. It's like, hey, yeah. I can record higher <laughs> fidelity audio than these fiber channel drives can record. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, right there. Yes, very um, much so. <laughs> That's cool. It's a thing. It's going to need a lot of testing. Anybody who's ever messed around with the DAWs, if you're using a door, you know, hey, 5.3, it's stable. Leave it alone. Not broke. Don't fix. <laughs> yeah. But I want to give this a quick mention. This is something I ran across in, as with any young boy or girl's journey through it, you get to the point where you just try to automate everything. Okay. It's going to happen to you. If it hasn't happened to you yet, this is going to be your future. One thing I want to do is we use Jack, which means we have a matrix, a patch bay of inputs and outputs and routing, and all that has to get sorted every time the Jack server starts up. Traditionally, you'd use something like Laddish or a front end for Laddish, Claudia, and just save that session, and then all of your routes. You know, it can be something crazy elaborate or something as simple as like I need these two inputs to go to this output or something like I have here, which is probably like 15 or 20. And when it gets routed through with the um, pulse, jack sinks and all around back to OBS and mix minus and all that. Well, without having to deal with that overhead and plus the ability to just being able to launch it, I wanted to script 
to, and I, I was getting ready to just really go into a deep dive. Okay, okay, how do I get all this and this? Fortunately, I ran across, this is, this is not new, but it's been around for a while. You can tell by the website. Yeah. yeah. That's not new. <laughs> yes. This is AJ Snapshot, <laughs> which does exactly what it says on the tin. This will work with Alsa. This will work with Jack. Nice. You get all your settings. You take the snapshot. Then, once you're launching everything, I have new boop which is just a shell script that I put together that once Jack loads, everything synced up with NetJack, makes all the connections for me, and just run that one script and I'm done with it. So I know for the vast majority, you're like, I don't care, maybe the one or two people, they're like, oh, what? That's the thing? Yes, this is the thing. Go use it. You'll be very happy. Now, I mean, it, for me, nice. it might as well be... Um kanji but uh it seems more useful than the other snaps mm. all right i'm done <laughs> can help let's not go down no. that track I, just can help us it's like that's been a minute <laughs> yes yes it has i was getting a bit antsy <laughs> if we want to keep up with the audio stuff i also released a new episode of interfacing linux this one's covering yes. the m audio profiler 2626 this is what we are currently using it has replaced you know i just bought this out of curiosity because it was twenty dollars on ebay i'm like oh, let's see if we can get one of these working and be a fun video little did i know that i was purchasing purchasing the next interface for everything I do in the studio. And turns out this was it. This is everything works, including it has an internal mixer built into it. So you can do some weird, nice. crazy things. Nice. And that's really fun. I enjoyed it. It has replaced the FCA 1616. It is Firewire. None of that fancy newfangled USB stuff. No, sir. Not in my house. Um, eight channels is awesome for around, you know, I said you could play this for like 20 bucks, uh, but if I paid 200 bucks for it, I'd be happy with it. And, you know, with all things in this series that I'm doing, look, hang on, look, ah, oh, look, there's an old man playing guitar. Oh, I love that. <laughs> and I ran it through, you know, this is a legitimate real world um, LGC session. Everything's loaded up, boom, just making it record all the inputs and it passed. I didn't have any problems with it. The whole point of this is taking advantage of what Linux can do. Firewire devices under Windows 10 and Mac are just falling off. That's why people are trying to get rid of this stuff. I mean, this was a $480, not $480, £480 interface when it released. Yeah. Yeah. And it, <laughs> yeah. Not, not expensive. This was like prosumer type stuff. Got it for 20 bucks because the dude's like, I can't find anybody to take it. It doesn't work with anything. And I'm like, hang on a minute. So <laughs> I have nice. this PCIe card. <laughs> yeah. Because the FireWire cards, you, they still make them now in their PCIe. Buy one, just pop that in, plug it in. Didn't have to do anything crazy. Just set it up and it works. And you can take advantage of this stuff. You can get an eight channel interface, like really good preamps. Um, all the ADAT you want, spit of all that fun stuff. For like, 20 bucks, 50 bucks, 75. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you're patient and you find the next person who's like, somebody take this, pay for shipping. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so make of that what you will. What do we have up next? Up next, we have, uh, well, we have MPV on Windows. And uh, whoever posted that particular link in the show notes was browsing our Linux sucks. But... <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, that aside, um, the developers of MPV, uh, if you are, you know, using Linux on the desktop, chances are you've heard of MPV, um, have added uh, just a teeny tiny little, well, three lines to the, um, the readme, which uh, reads, note, quote unquote, direct Windows support <laughs> is deprecated, complete with GL slash Vulkan support by Microsoft's WSL2. This will enable running Linux binaries under Win32, and owing to Microsoft's competence, it will be faster than native. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, what's happening? <laughs> Well, I could tell what's happening because I actually read through the whole thread until uh, it got locked. Uh, but it's... Um, That's how you can always spot a good GitHub 
thread. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, what's like, in this oh, one? it got locked. All right, I got to read all of it. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> but yeah, it's basically uh, the developers are saying that with Microsoft implementing WSL2, which we talked about um, last week, and that, of course, brings all the DirectX 12 bits, and uh, in future, we'll support OpenGL, Vulkan, whatever. Microsoft are currently working on that. And uh, the developer is like, oh, Oh, it's going to have that, is it? Okay, then people can just use WSL2 to run MPV on Windows. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And there's a bunch of Windows users going, I I don't like that. I don't like that at all, because it means I'm going to have to use <laughs> WSL to use a GUI application. And then someone at, at one point, it's like uh, the embodiment of common sense and pragmatism. is like, no one chooses an operating system based on a media player. Actually... <laughs> And I like that there was someone who disagreed with that. <laughs> Did yeah. somebody walk into the room, a kick in the door, take off his traffic coat, and he's like, what? <laughs> At that point, it might as well. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I like how the developer talked about how hard it is to develop on Windows and how easy it is on uh, Linux and why you know why you should, shouldn't even have to bother porting it because of, because of the... WSL too. So <laughs> don't they have? I mean, VLC runs on. Oh that yeah, was VLC also one of the arguments that got brought yeah. up, and uh, that same person that said that yes, people do choose operating systems based on media players uh, yeah. contested the fact that VLC <laughs> was a viable alternative because it was bloated. Mm -hmm. VLC's I'm not joking. <laughs> and crashy on Windows, yes, at times. <laughs> One thing I genuinely love about um, MPV is I use it when I'm doing the timestamps because it has a very fast scrubbing. Yeah, With yeah, it's based like, on mPlayer after all. So. And just run it through. <laughs> so, which yeah. and as a media player goes, it does decoding with completely negligible overhead like mm -hmm. the t42 thinkpad that i have it can play videos on youtube through a browser anywhere above 480p it just starts chugging mm -hmm. i can feed it a 720p video um from directly from a youtube thing and it plays it without a hitch it's yeah. like oh no, well, all right then. <laughs> <laughs> I use MPlayer on all of my old machines, including my uh, Mac G4 Cube, which was my entertainment PC for a long time. And with MPlayer, I could actually play 1080p video on it. Uh, with the default players that come on Mac, you could only get up to 720. So <laughs> that's MPlayer is just awesome. Well, the good even thing older is equipment. we're all currently in 2020, <laughs> and even our hundred dollar. Amazon tablet can play today, Pete. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> the dark days of uh, I, I genuinely remember this. When, you know, these were for dual core. Get off my lawn moment of like trying to play a 720p video that I downloaded off the internet. And I think it was mm -hmm. like Dignation or something like that. It just couldn't do it. Then we finally got yeah. the um, Nvidia accelerated with player um not NV, and what was it? Uh, VDPAU? Yep, Varpu. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden we could play 720p. It's like, oh, this yeah. is amazing. That was brilliant. Mm -hmm. So there is your history lesson. Let's talk about our favorite topic. And, it, well, it's not even a topic. It's just an excuse <laughs> to do this. Yeah. Yes. yes. <laughs> and Microsoft loves Linux. But that wasn't always the case. And that, that is the topic mm -hmm. of today's uh, ZDNet article, which uh, one of the people who um, were in charge of Windows specifically, uh, who worked for Microsoft, obviously, is Stephen Sinofsky. Um, he's releasing a book and he gave an interview um, to a bunch of different websites about specifically um one of the things that he covers in the book is well the early noughties uh, all through the 90s and the late 80s uh, when microsoft was very much against the idea of open source in any shape or form and um he basically says like yeah bill gates felt personally attacked that an open source model could develop and distribute software because dude if you want to like put a mm -hmm. bow on it look at that man i mean yeah Gates' explanation of the gpl <laughs> yeah. in 2001 and i quote makes mm -hmm. it impossible for a commercial company to use any of that work or build 
on any of that work, which I, I think. <laughs> Oh. That's um, no, 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 no. That that seems like a nicer way of saying we can't just straight up yoink it and not contribute anything back. That's not. Mm-hmm. Wait, that's the. Uh, it's not somehow yeah. fair. So Matt, <laughs> that was basically the anti-Steve Jobs clause. But whatever. Um, uh, for Bill Gates, and yeah, that 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 quote was perfect. That was flying in the face of what Microsoft was trying to do. It's like, no, we are developing software and don't smack the microphone. Um, (laughs) We're developing software and we want to make money out of it. And if you're a hobbyist that's sharing like, you know, the literal basic punch cards and Mm -hmm. you're sharing those with your friends, then you're a thief. You're a Mm -hmm. damn thief and a criminal and you should go to jail. I'm now exaggerating. (laughs) Or I need to make, see, it'd be great if I'd already thought I had to make the meme, just a picture of Steve Jobs in 2001 was laughs in BSD. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, no, t- to um, Microsoft, open source was an enemy to put downs because of the way that Bill Gates uh, thought that the whole thing worked. And that kind of translated to an entire culture within the company. And let's face it, Steve Ballmer was Gates' lapdog, sock puppet, call it whatever you want. He wasn't a very good head of Microsoft. But yeah, it carried on and spilled into the noughties when uh, Steve Ballmer said that Linux was cancer. So, yeah. I don't know. I don't know yeah. if I tango with Ballmer. I've seen him chase hovering cake. On stage. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen him sweat profusely. Oh, wait, uh, I guess that just means I saw him. He, yeah. He, you could almost, I mean, we got developers, developers, developers. I mean, that, that's yes. a gift. It might not have been intentional, but. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm sure he was deadly serious trying to create hype on stage mm-hmm. and it tanked. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <well>. Definitely, definitely. <laughs> and, you know, indeed, the, the rise of open source came about on the backs of proprietary and in doing so became much more progressive. And even further back in history, when Unix was king, when I started learning computers, Windows was the less expensive option when it came along with Windows 3.1 and and whatnot. And it became very common on server with Windows NT. And then the open source Linux upstart came along and disrupted the whole industry. Yay! So yeah, those uh, twenty thousand uh, dollar Unix uh, software for each workstation is no lo- was no longer twenty thousand dollars. <laughs> <laughs> Needed to be, yeah. <laughs> so to Windows yeah, credit, no, they, they did offer a less expensive option. <laughs> The article actually says it's like, yeah, Windows and Microsoft, uh, by extension, lost the server market because, hey, guess what? Linux was free. Mm -hmm. It's Mm -hmm. like, yeah, you probably had to pay someone to learn Linux and to explain Linux to everyone else in the company. But that was minimal when compared to the licensing that Microsoft was offering. So it's like, always rolls rolls around. I mean, (laughs) now now it's software as a service and you're going to be dealing with like support contracts and this is what my, hey, Microsoft, that's your business model. Well, you're working on making it then. Um, Times have changed. Times are strange. But I like this brave new world that we get to live in. It's kind of fun. Yes. Awesome. Uh, Okay. All right. We got to get into a slice of pie, but we got a gang of people. We got to thank for helping us out. Yes. We'd like to give them a mention, take a little break and be like, hey, man, thank you. Um, and yeah. you, and you, and you, and you for supporting the show. If you want to do that, it's patreon.com forward slash Linux Gamecast. We got a little deal there where we can hook you up with some stuff, a little, you know, extra thank yous. You know what I'm saying? No, not that. Mm-hmm. That other thing. Yeah. That other thing, right? <laughs> um, <laughs> what else do we have? Oh, if you want to buy some merch, we got. Uh, Stored at linksteamcast.com. I think that redirects. It's got, uh, let's see, what do we have? It used to. <laughs> it might. <Yeah. laughs> we got the Hell Hulks. We got uh, the three face of this show, LWDW. We got the Frig Files, all the fun stuff. And it's kind of brilliant. Yay. I don't know. What else do we have, Pedro? Um, well, we have wish zones. Um, wish zones. <laughs> yeah, that's the good. <laughs> we have wish lists. Uh, I have one. Jill has one. Jordan has one. And of course, Ven decided that he didn't want one. He's like, no, it's just gonna be for the studio. For the studio. So 
There's a studio wish list there too. Yes. <laughs> what? I'm only bending the truth a little bit. No, that's, yeah. that's it. <laughs> I sit around for. Like, I couldn't think of anything to. Like, if I want something, I just go buy it, man. I'm. Ah. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. I'm still poor, so I can't buy everything I want immediately. <laughs> yeah, but you, you don't you see the you don't you don't spend like five minutes going. Which one of these mustards do I want? This one is eight cents cheaper. Mm. Uh, no, I don't no. buy mustard. Nori does. <laughs> I don't know. You can ask her. <laughs> see, at least somebody yeah. in that house makes sense. <laughs> Yuck! I hate mustard. <laughs> now I just want to make. Pedro mustard and pea smoothie. <laughs> Ew. I'm not allergic to mustard. <laughs> I know, that's what the peas are for. <laughs> Ew. Oh, so you, you want to kill me and make me hate it. <laughs> Listen, yeah. those are your gotcha. words. Those are your words. Um, <laughs> all right, beautiful so, people. Let's get uh, into... Oh, We have lots we of people. Do the yes. Yeah. We got us some thanks. So Darkwing is now a sea monster at the sea monster level. Yay! We love you, Darkwing. Yay. And we have a new patron, um, AJD. Um, and I don't know. AJ. I have to look at new patron. <laughs> yeah, a new patron. I have to look at what level they're on if they're in Discord yet. Um, but Aldius, Aldius gifted uh, Ven lots of games, and he's gifted us so many games over the last few years. <laughs> so awesome. I think Aldius has been prolific. Aldius and yeah. Theron, uh, yes. they're the two ones that immediately pop into my head. It's like, oh, you got you gifted me a game, didn't you? Yes, you did. It was kind of weird, man. Everyone yeah. decided to give us like multiple copies of um, mm -hmm. uh, Dark Weep. That was you. <laughs> <laughs> and it was Aldius and uh, Kylinix. Yeah. Yeah, Kylinix. <laughs> they both gifted you um, Code Vein. <laughs> yeah. And uh, what was awesome is Truggy in chat had gifted me the shirt actually quite a while ago, and I, I, I kept forgetting to wear it. Now, now I'm wearing it. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I wanted to thank him because I love the shirt. <laughs> <laughs> nice things. I mean, it's kind of interesting that we all been able to come together and pull this off. So, <laughs> somehow, yes, somehow, yeah, because of all you wonderful people. <laughs> it's always a fun explanation when I'm showing people I'm like, wait, how does that work? I'm like, it's held together with tape, but we can get more tape if we need to. But let's keep it held. Yes, together. yeah, <laughs> we have a tape fund, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe some string every couple of months. <laughs> You know, if we yeah, yeah, yeah. It is brilliant. Uh, let's get into this week's. Yeah, so this let's this pop. is going to be really See, cool. See, that's not Ooh. even like retro that's... hipster pixels. That's just the only picture. I can no, that's find. just flat that's pie. Just... That, yeah, that's yeah. just old fashioned. <laughs> that's just low polygon <laughs> graphics. <laughs> So this is uh, Lilygo has released its latest smartwatch, the TTGO T Watch T twenty twenty. Rolls off the tongue. Yeah, it does. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I know. <laughs> yes, no, it doesn't. Because <laughs> everyone's going to call it the Twatch. The Twatch. <laughs> there you oh, go. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> Done. That's wor that works. <laughs> um, it is highly customizable. Has a one point five four inch touch display that also will display color. Why it has Wi Fi and supports Arduino. And at the low cost of twenty three dollars and forty cents plus four dollars and four dollars shipping. Just about anyone can have this smartwatch. It's it's amazing, and I I just added That's myself really to the good. watch, you know, to the wait list um, because they've they've sold out of the initial batch. So I'm on the wait list now. So I'll be notified when it becomes available, and so can you. Mm. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and the Arduino compatibility has me curious. Yes. <laughs> it's like just how far can you? take that <laughs> exactly <laughs> when are we finally going to get a like smart pocket watch uh, oh, yeah well you can hipster. make yourself oh. yeah. <laughs> like, just, uh, just, I, just take the little go and take the straps off and put a hook on it <laughs> <laughs> no. I mean, uh, if I'm going to be carrying around a wholly no, really useless, like wholly <laughs> useless device in 2020, it needs to be a little bit bigger than that. Uh, because okay. wristwatch, useless <laughs> device in 2020, because you get your mobile on you. Um, 
Sorry, uh, Van says you're useless. Too. It is. You know it's useless. You don't have it on right now. <laughs> yes, because I'm not out of the house. Exactly. There's not, you know, people looking at me. That's literally the only reason I wear it. <laughs> it's jewelry. Thank you. Um, I, I stand uncorrected. Um, <laughs> That's kind of brilliant. I like it. Um, it makes it genuinely when I was reading this, I wondered to myself, I was like, where's my pebble? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I never picked one of those up, but I know it's you did. gone. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where it's at. It was never a use thing. I bought it like as a curiosity. His picture was like, oh, well, look, it's got Arduino kind of, like pebbled it. But I was like, oh, at the time it takes Bluetooth notification. Oh, it's neat and played with it for like half a day and it's somewhere. Yeah. yeah. I can't I have the well, same feeling this would be like, oh that's five years later. The Lily Go uh looks interesting, but uh there's another smartwatch that I'm very curious about, which is the um Pine one. Oh the yeah. Pine yeah. Watch. Hmm. yeah. <laughs> Whatever they that's... decide to release that if they haven't already. I know. They probably man. didn't, I missed it. <laughs> it. It's the pine thing. So it's be, pine's got to want everything. You think about it. tablet, phone, yeah. watch, laptop. Yeah. You got the pine yeah. ecosystem. Give me a pine pocket watch. I'll buy one. Yeah. There you go, Ben. You should contact them Gold on Twitter and let them know. <laughs> <laughs> or just send them the video. <laughs> so, a much wanted feature has finally shown up in the Raspberry Pi beta firmware. Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh yes. This is awesome. So, um, see, yes, Pedro new... messes with me sometimes because he like launched such a blank stare into the camera. I'm like, what did you forget? <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. That was more for and Pedro. The, just uh... looks up from his nap and he goes acting. <laughs> That was uh, purely for the entertainment of the video watchers, but no, the Raspberry Pi 4 has a new beta firmware, which you can get right now if you want to, you know, do the beta testing thing and let them know of any issues that can and most likely will arise. And the big thing that at least this article uh, makes mention of is you can use the USB 3 ports, which are in a proper USB 3 bus this time around, mm -hmm. um, to boot. You no longer have to use the uh, SD card. You can use it if you want to expand the storage, but you can have a USB 3 SSD plugged into there, and all of a sudden things work a little bit faster. A little Just bit. a mm. bit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, no, uh, this version, uh, depending on what they do with it, it needs to be enshrined. This is like, okay, this is the turning point. This is when it happened. Uh, or, you know, the Raspberry Pi Foundation just goes, ah, it's official now, and uh, we're just going to cut the BS, and there you go. Have that. It's like, all right, <laughs> cool. <laughs> yeah, I mean, th they do straight out come and say, there be bugs. Use it your own yeah. risk. <laughs> Which is yeah. just boilerplate of, like, don't blame us. Have fun. Um, this, now, this is, this is, this is good. Especially when it's out of the box, because then you can take one of your itsy bitsy teeny weeny little, um, you know, like one twenty eight gig. Ah, oh, love living in this future. And pop it right in the. Air. <laughs> yeah, it's got? so nice. You know? Yeah, yeah. We've been waiting for this. Gigs. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we've it's been big. waiting for this since the first Raspberry Pi was released. So this is one of the most wanted features, and it's here now, and you can demo it. We're just booting <laughs> off thumb drives, USB three thumb drive yeah it's like yeah being able to swap the them out because you know what's a lot less difficult to lose a thumb drive yeah you, you know those micro sd yeah. I, those things i are know gone. those sd like, cards are <laughs> the micro sds i have straight up lost three ones under my oven which will be there when the next person buys this house because i was like you know what i don't want it bad enough man <laughs> They're just views to the floor from all the constant heating. I just, it's like, it's like, well, that's gone. <laughs> and unlike, unlike Ben, I've never lost anything, so I'm too careful. I challenge that. Yeah. I challenge yeah. that so much. Steve. <laughs> oh. Actually, only two things in my whole life have See, I lost. Now, now that none of the stories are really changing, I was like, whoa, wait, wait, what? I, I like, know. Like, I exaggerated. <laughs> <laughs> That's the last.
last thing. If you want to get in touch with us, uh, we didn't. Well, we really don't have time to go through anything. But uh, how would they do that, Pedro? If you want to send us a message, you could do that very easily. Mm-hmm. It's uh, LinuxGameCast.com contact button. There's a form. Pick LWDW from the shows. Send us your message. And that's it. Unless your message can be answered by looking in the first page of Google, then you done goofed, <laughs> and it's on you. Fair enough. <laughs> We can leave a YouTube comment, no guarantees on that, but we do read Patreon them. comments. Those Patreon are good comments. Those always go through. Um, that's the thing. We got to get out of here. Uh, we got to go watch something get shot into space, man. So. Yes. Yay. Let's With roll some credits. Like okay. Maybe. <laughs> mm. Little credits. Well, and thank you again, Daisy. You are AJD, <laughs> which I, I, I wasn't sure, but I figured so. So thank you so much, Daisy. And it's nice to have another lady in our fold. <laughs> Assumptions? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, she said in chat when I announced it, she, she said it was her. So. <laughs> I like how both me and Mir had the exact same reaction to that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, right. Well, she commented. She's still assuming I- that Daisy's uh, only a female. <laughs> See, she says, hi, Jill, thanks, because she said it in chat when I announced the name. (laughs) Yes, Daisy could be a Borg. No, she isn't. (laughs) But. See you next week, everyone. Wonderful. We love you guys. Hi.